Hey guys, Clifton Murphy here today with Funny Buck Bees and Woodworks and what we're going to do today is show you guys how to manufacture or construct a Freeman style small hive beetle trap. Um, we do have these for sale on our website. If you don't have the tools necessary to build one, you'll need a table saw, a hammer, nails, uh, things of that nature. So please check out our website. It's www.funnybugbees.com. Um, there's a link in the description. Let's get to it. All right, the first step in your process is gonna to be to cut all your wood. Um, I'll put the dimensions for the wood you're gonna need in the, uh, in the description below. Uh, so I've already done that, saving you guys some time watching the video. Um, I personally like to label each piece as I cut it so that they're easier to grab because some of the dimensions on the lumber are actually pretty close to one another, like these two pieces. So that's just personal habit, something that I do. Uh, you're also going to need to cut a piece of screen. Um, this is number six hardware cloth. It's actually pretty difficult to find. That's your next step is to actually get all your pieces of wood, lumber cut, and then cut and measure a piece of mesh for it. Um, and we'll do that now. And then we can start assembling the high beetle trap. Personally, I like to glue and nail everything. Um, and just because I make a lot of these and a lot of wooden products in general, I'm actually going to use a nail gun. You can use a hammer. It's perfectly fine. Um, plywood base. Now, a lot of people actually when they make these and the plans that you get off the internet actually call for you to make a sheet metal tray. We don't use these anymore and the reason that we don't is because it doesn't matter how careful you are with this, it doesn't take much use pulling it in and out of the hive uh, trap until the corners wear where you folded it and it breaks apart and um, and all the oil runs out into your hive, into the hive trap. It doesn't get in your hive, of course, but so this method, and this sheet metal is not cheap either. Uh, a 10 foot roll of it at a big box store is going to run you about $20. Um, so it's not cheap. Uh, I don't recommend using it anymore. We used to use it. You can see this one was used, uh, but because of that reason, we don't do it anymore. What we actually use now are aluminum uh, basting trays like you would cook a turkey in. They're like a dollar fifty at the grocery store um, and a large size one is actually the perfect width and length for the Freeman style hive beetle trap and I'll show you that uh, right now. Alright so this is a cheap dollar and fifty cent roasting pan from a big box store. Uh, as you can see I've actually cut it uh, because the large size is uh, this is for an eight frame um, high beetle trap. That's what we're making this for. Uh, the large roasting pan is actually about an inch and a quarter too wide, which when you cut off these edges from both sides, it makes it perfect. As you can see, it fits right down in there perfectly. Um, so that's what we use and that's what I recommend. It holds a good amount of oil. Plus, the, good, the other good thing about this is when you're removing it, to dump high beetles, debris, mites, and oil. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It doesn't slosh because it's deep enough to hold, you know, a half inch or so of oil and not slosh out when you're removing it from the hive, unlike this, um, which is about an inch deep. As you can see, it's much shallower um, and it spilled, you end up spilling a lot. So it's just not a good idea. All right, so. Now onto the actual construction. All right, we got the walls on the sides of the box. Um, next step is to actually build up the front end. This is going to act as a, as a landing pad for the bees. Um, and you just do that with two extra pieces that you've cut in the front. Um, those will be glued and nailed together. Um, so we'll do that now. Just going to spread the glue around, get a nice even coat. Helps everything stick together really well. And we're also going to glue the bottom and the face of the first piece. And just 
give that a good smear. And the same for the bottom. That first piece goes right up against here. We're going to do the same thing to the front piece. Just get a nice coat of glue on that. This also helps waterproof it. We're going to paint this when we're done, um, but if the paint, well, when the paint wears out, because you all know it's going to, uh, and you know we're not gonna paint it every year religiously, we're gonna forget some, uh, whatever. So this will definitely help keep the wood better longer. Um, and then just a bead across the bottom. Next piece goes right up against that first piece. Make sure everything's flush. And we're just gonna nail it in place. Like so. There you go. All right guys, your next step is gonna take the wire mesh that you cut and attach it to your base. This is what prevents the bees from going down into the pan with the oil or soapy water. You can actually use either one. It's not gonna matter. Um, so what I like to do is just line up one side really well. Um, and you wanna line it up at the inner box edge. You can see that the inner box edge so that it's not too short to reach all the way to the back. So that's what we're gonna do. And what I use is uh, T50 nails, or excuse me, T50 uh, staples. So get your staple gun ready, line everything up where you want it, put one staple right there in the corner, do the same thing at the bottom end. Make sure everything's gonna fit, and it is. Like so. Then you pull it tight. Get everything nice and tight. Hold it at the other side with a staple. And then finish at this bottom corner. Pull it nice and tight. Pull it as tight as you can before you staple it so everything stays down and then just go down, go down the edge with staples. This will prevent your bees from when they come in to land, your hive is above it. They'll come in to land on your landing pad you've made for them and they can walk right across this. They can't get under it. This is how you do. And then the last step on this is to trim it to length and, um, and then we'll move to the next step. All right, so our next step after we have the uh, mesh in place is to add what will eventually be the actual support I mean, what you can see here is that we're creating a bee space for the bees so that they can't get into the pan with the oil or soapy water. Um, you can use either soapy water or oil. You just need a liquid that has no surface tension um, or has, you know, so that, the bee, that the beetles can't actually walk on because if you put plain water in this, the beetles will just walk on it and walk right up to the side now. Um, which we don't want. All right, so that's done. So what I'll do now is add a couple of extra nails down each side, and then we'll flip it over and staple the screen to the underside of this piece um, just really quickly.
And all we have to do is flip the box over so we can get to the mesh on the underside of this piece. Try to hold it up there so you can see. There you go. So what you've crafted there, gentlemen, ladies, is a bottom board IPM with a built-in space to hold a reservoir of oil. What happens is uh, when you put a, a hive box on this, uh, the bees will chase the hive beetles down to the bottom of the hive or try to get them out. That's what they do. This particular mesh is 3.5 millimeters aperture size which is big enough for the hive beetles to go through but not big enough for bees to go through. The average adult size of a hive beetle is 3.1 millimeters. So you have to use this particular screen. All right, that's that. We'll start with the next step now. All right, everybody, so the last step is to take the pan that you purchased at a grocery store for like a dollar fifty, a dollar and a quarter. Whatever your grocery store brand is, uh, that's where you can get them. Again, all I did was take wire snips or a you know, sheet metal shears and trim down the edge because this pan comes about 13 and a half inches wide. Um, the large size does, it's 13 and a half inches wide and the inside width of the high beetle trap is 12 and 1 8 inches. So you have to trim it down for it to fit. Your next step it would be to uh, paint the high beetle trap uh, on the outside. I never paint anything on the inside uh, uh, in here. Uh, so that the bee, sp the bee space where your bees are located uh, remains completely natural. Uh, but all the outside edges, uh, the landing deck, uh, the bottom uh, will be painted with a moldu, uh, mold and mildew resistant latex paint. Um, and the last step that you would have to use this is just to take your pan and slide it right in. And, and typically what happens uh, this controls uh, uh, hive beetles extremely well. If I have an infested hive, and every hive has hive beetles that I've seen, at least here in the south. Um, but if I put one of these on a hive that's really bad and come back in 24 hours, there's usually, I would say 90 to 95% of the hive beetles that were in the hive are now drowned in the olive oil or, or Chris, you know, whatever oil you use. You're going to add about an eighth to a half inch of oil to the bottom of this pan and when the beetles fall into it, they go through the aperture, the bees chase them in, they drop into the oil, they can't walk on the surface of the oil, and they drown. Uh, it's very quick, it's very effective. This will clear up hive beetles on a, on a hive within two days. Um, and, uh, and, and, I, and I love it, I can't recommend it enough. So that's the last thing we're going to do. Now when we take it out and put it on a hive, uh, as you can see, the, the rear has a large opening. Um, so what we do in particular, um, on our hives is we have a, a roll of four inch wide, uh, pardon me, four inch wide duct tape uh, or black, uh, you know, vinyl tape. And we will actually cut a strip about two inches long or wider than this hive beetle trap and that'll go across it. It seals up the rear entrance. When it rains, water can't get into here because it's completely sealed all the way around with duct tape and then we just take one corner of the duct tape off, pull out our pan, dump it, replace the oil or soapy water, um, and put it back in. Uh, it's super simple, slides right out, slides right in. This is different than the designs you're gonna find on the internet because all the designs for this on the internet are designed to use that metal pan I showed you, showed you earlier in the video, which do not hold up, they do not last, and I do not recommend them. They require that you use uh, chemical sealants like uh, waterproofing caulk, on the inside corners where you've made it and these pans you don't need to do that again we sell these on our website um, please visit www.funnybugbees.com there's a link in the description um, and you can order these if you watch this video um, then you'll get a coupon code if you watched it to the end uh, if you'll put in coupon code youtube beetle just like it sounds spell youtube and then beetle all together uh, you'll get an additional 10% off of one of these um, and you can order them uh, uh, disassembled, assembled and assembled and painted.